Hi, Teresa Martinez. I hope you were able to join me on my first two blogs. This blog is going to be really quick about sterilization and eugenics and how the prison system has silently gotten away with eugenics. Also, I'm briefly going to tell you really quick about my human right violation that happened to me while incarcerated. So, I'll just, this may become really shocking to you, but the Department of Corrections has silent, silently been practicing eugenics. Now, eugenics is, is a form of control of choosing what racial quality um, is formed for future generations. Um, Justice Now has worked 10 years on, re on recording different sterilization cases and yes, women have been sterilized. It is really happening. The prison system has gotten away with doing that. We have known documentation of women that were actually given consent forms and actually pushed into signing the consent forms while they were halfway sedated and being told that they had some form of cancer or they needed a tubul tubal ligation done or they had a cyst that if wasn't removed would turn into some cancer form that would cause them to die. Of course when you hear that you're going to die, your first thing is help me remove it go ahead and so they've signed now these women are not able to have children and that's and the prison needs to stand accountable for that we need to expose the prison system for what they've really done justice now has been working on sterilization uh, policy for 10 years uh, we've recorded a lot of research a lot of data a lot of information um, thanks to the our peoples inside the prison uh, we've been able to put all of the research and the data together. We created a policy, it went to Sacramento, and after 10 years of hard work, 2014, the bill was signed. As of January 1st, 2015, now it is law. Now our peoples are now protected against sterilization and they are implementing the law now so that women can now no longer be sterilized and are able to have their children. I wanted to share with you really quick about the human right violation that occurred with me in 1997. I was diagnosed HIV positive inside the Department of Corrections Central California Women's Facility. Because of my high risk behaviors, uh, working in, in prostitution in the sex industry, being a heroin addict, using intravenous uh, drugs and needles. Um, tattooing without clean needles inside prison and out. When I was told I was HIV positive, I did not find find it shocking. Um, I was I didn't find it surprising because of my high risk behaviors, but I was not educated until Justice Now came and supported me and helped me and educated me. And uh, the first thing I thought about that I was going to die this horrible death. And so for 10 years, uh, more than 10 years, I was on antiviral therapy. 2006, when I picked up my last case, um, I was in Linwood Women's County Jail in Los Angeles. A doctor came to see me. They needed a diagnosed paper. I actually agreed to have this done because I knew that I was HIV positive. Um, the test that they ran on me came back negative. I said, no way, this is not happening do another test. They did a second test called an ELISA, which cost a lot of money, came back negative. I said, nope, I wasn't going for it. I asked them to do another screening. They did another one called a Western Block, which is 99% accurate and correct. That came back negative. Caused an investigation, just as now investigated a laboratory called Biotech. Uh, it caused other law firms and lawyers to also investigate biotech. Well, biotech disappeared. Biotech Laboratory was contracted with Central California Women's Facility, all behind capital, all money, of course, right? The prison does anything for the almighty dollar. And, of course, if you give back negative results, you have no reason to see uh, the patient. If you give a positive result, you need to keep screening this patient. So... As we found out as years passing and investigations were happening, um, many, many of our peoples in Central California Women's Facility were coming up with 
neg uh, positive results of lupus, which they didn't have. Lifers that had been incarcerated for 27, 30 years that had no contacts with no sexual contact, no use with drugs, were coming up with hepatitis C positive results. Those were false. So because of all of these violations, um, there was a thorough investigation on Chowchilla, uh, Central California Women's Facility. And these are just part of the human rights violations that occur. And that's why it's really, really extremely important for you to number one, educate yourself. Number two, uh, be involved. Get a hold of organizations and be a part of, stand accountable. In my next blog, I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some empowering tools and development tools for leadership that will help you out uh, so that you can become more involved and you can become a voice for our peoples that we have inside, our incarcerated mothers and fathers, our sisters, our aunts, our uncles, our grandfathers, all of our family members who are, are inside and incarcerated, not only for our incarcerated loved ones, but also to strengthen our communities of color, our marginalized communities who are highly policed. So stay tuned for my next blog.